All right, Athena Devon with Coalesce Creations. Take it away. Good morning, everyone. How are you? I hope you all are starting your day off great. Um, um, like Janet said, uh, I have actually been using Canva now for uh, nine years. Uh, and I use it for everything in my business. I have a couple of different businesses and I use it for all of them. I use it for not only social media, but I also use it for contracts, documents, um, website elements, graphic designs, flyers, posters. So Canva is, is a great tool if you're not wanting to learn all of the learning curve issues um, with using InDesign or using Adobe Photoshop and things like that. Canva can absolutely get the job done for what you're going to need. So what I really wanna do, I don't wanna take up too much of your guys' time. I'm very respectful of everyone's time because I am myself an entrepreneur, so understand how that goes with our schedules. So what I'm gonna do is see if I can share my screen here and I'm just gonna go ahead and pull up the Canva account. I'm going to put Janet Mitchell on blast and show her branding that we just recently did. I helped, I created for her. Um, for her to use with, with Fathom. And I kind of want to show all the different types of templates that you can create um, from very intricate to very basic um, templates that you can reuse over and over and just make it really a drop copy and paste situation to where you're not feeling like you have to spend hours upon hours to figure out how to design a post. So as soon as I can figure out how this is going to let me share my screen, I will switch over to that. I gave you permission to share. Okay, so I need to just find where it's gonna let me do that. Here we go. All right. Okay, can everyone see my screen all right? Janet, can you see it? Uh oh, did I lose audio? No, no, no. I, I was on mute. Yes, I can see. Oh, it. okay. I was like, oh, I did something wrong. Okay, you can see it just fine. Yes. Okay. All right. Perfect. So in Canva, and I will go to just um, the main page you would see so you don't get confused when you first get a Canva account. Now, Canva, you can have a free account or you can have a pro account. The pro account is anywhere from nine to twelve dollars a month, or one hundred and twenty dollars for the year if you decide to go the annual route to save a little bit of money. Um, I have the pro account because, like I said, I use it for almost everything in running the business. Um, there's a lot of elements and things that you can do when you have the pro account, but you can still create templates and and basic things that you need to do with the free account with Canva. So when you first create your account, and you log in, you'll have a screen like this. Uh, where I'll have your information and menu on the left-hand side where you can search for templates here at the top where it says, what will you design? There are hundreds to thousands of pre-made templates already. Uh, for me, I just find it's easier to start with a blank canvas and then create versus spending the hours trying to edit somebody else's design. But that's just my style way. You may find it's easier to start with a pre-made template and then just change a few things about it. So what I really want to do is go into showing you um, what we've created for Janet for Fathom, since that's kind of where you guys are and you would be able to identify with that much better than my wedding uh, branding um, items. So you can create these different folders. And so I have a folder specifically for Janet. And I'm just going to kind of go through each one of these templates. When you create a folder, um, it will show you all of your designs or just your images or just your videos because you can create full-fledged videos or just quick social media seconds to minute of a video. So what I wanna do is show you all the templates and then kind of walk through how you would create a template. Some of these are very intricate and can take a lot more work. So we won't delve so much into those, but I do wanna go into some of the simple ones. So first, let me show you what an Instagram profile would look like when you design it with several different types of templates. So I'll pull this one up. So you can see, actually, let me do it this way. This may be better. And we'll just walk through it this way. 
Okay, can you still see the screen okay? Yes. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna go to the actual template. Oh, good job! You did a good job on this one. <laughs> I snuck one in. You did. Okay, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna show this one in the next one so you guys uh, can kind of see. I'm gonna show you what the final product looks like and then I'm gonna show you how we get to that. So this is a, what I like to call a random post template uh, that Janet's going to, to use when she has something that's not a pre-planned post. So the template really is just this red line and gray line in the top left-hand corner and then her signature and the logo, as well as the little gray area where the text box is gonna be. And then she can just drop and change any kind of picture that she wants to have inside here. So when she goes to this template, she just drops the photo she wants and she just changes the text. Everything else is already pre-done and easy. So it's gonna look consistent on her page. So this is another one, if you can see, it looks pretty much exactly like this one. All that changed is the photo and the text. I'll go back and forth again so you can see. The template is the same, but the information changes, okay? So that's gonna be the random post template we created for her. This is her agent review template. So whenever she has an agent that wants to give her some sweet words on, on all the amazing things that she does for everyone, this is what it's gonna look like. So it's gonna have a photo and then their review that they leave and the cute little stars at the bottom. So again, all she has to do is drop a photo, change the text, everything else is already pre-made and done for her. And if you guys can tell, we're gonna use some elements that are gonna continue throughout, which I'll show you when we get to the board. I just want you to kind of see what templates look like. This is the carousel. This is one that's um, much more intricate. It, it takes quite a long time to, to make, but it's absolutely worth it. Uh, carousels are those posts on Instagram where you scroll to the left to see all of the slides. Um, what we created is called a seamless carousel. There's two kinds of carousels. There's one carousel where it's just almost like a photo slideshow, where it's just several different photos going in a slideshow. A seamless carousel is when it looks like it's one graphic going all the way through. So as you're gliding through this, you can see the lines going from page to page, connecting all of them to look like one continuous versus five to 10 different photos. So a carousel, I'll show exactly what it would actually look like on the Instagram using one of mine so you can see what that looks like. Um, and then this is for a company referral. When you guys are referring out your Fathom partners, this one we made for Dagley Insurance. So we have a little cell phone on the left-hand side, which is doing a screen record of the actual website that people who are viewing this post would see if they go to that website. So in here, whenever she wants to mention something about Dagley Insurance, all she has to do is change the text right here in the middle where it says the premium clothing. This is just a template, so this is not an, a, already done. This is just showing where she would put her text and put whatever she actually wants for this. So this is kind of a what you call a video template. So it plays a video. On Instagram, you can do up to 15 to 30 seconds on a post and anywhere up to a minute on a reel and 30 seconds on a story. So this is when your videos really come in hand. Let's move on to the next one. This is the same thing, template the same from this one, but it, the information changed. So this one's the title company, the other one was the health insurance, and then this one's the mortgage lending. So the same template, but all the information changes, which is what you wanna do to make it much easier for you to move on to create what you actually wanna do in your business. Oh, we put a song to this one, I forgot. <laughs> this is... Can I take the music off? Let me see. Can I mute it? It'll stop in a second. Okay, so can you can you still hear me? Okay, perfect. It stopped. So this is what her entire actual profile is going to look like as people are scrolling through her page. So what I really want you to pay attention to is the consistency and the way that her brand clearly stands out on the Instagram even though every single post is a different post, they all complement each other and have items that match together. So if you look from the very bottom, she has three totally different templates, but do you see how the photo in the bottom right-hand corner 
looks like it's going into the post on the middle in the bottom where it looks like it has that gray line going through that connects the two. Um, and then you can move on to the second row from the bottom where you have what we called the two random posts. They're two of the same, so it looks consistent, but the information is different in both of those. And then we break up the color a little bit in the very middle of it with just a white space and a quote, an inspirational quote, a motivational quote, uh, anything that she uh, wants to share to just motivate people, that's where she would put that. In the third row to the right is a video that says, did you know? So that would be her fun facts about fab and post. But what, are, what I really want you to see here is the way you place your templates is what gives the visual appeal to people that want to scroll through your page. The more it is easy on the eyes, the more time they're going to spend on your Instagram page, scrolling and scrolling and clicking and clicking, loving and liking and sharing posts from your Instagram. What you really want to do with Instagram is not so much about how many likes that you get or how many follows you get. The goal that you really want to have and what I call the gold of Instagram is the shares and the saves. So this is where it becomes really important in the type of content you're sharing to get the saves and the shares. Because that means when someone saves their the post, it goes to their Instagram. When they look underneath saved, you're sitting right there and then they would contact you versus just a like that they'll forget that they've done. A share means that they're sharing your post to other people on Instagram or to Facebook or to another social media channel, but it still keeps all of your information there, which is why it's important to still either have your name or your logo in some kind of way or the branding to match so people know where it came from. So this would be what it looked like. It would just be repetitive and repetitive. So as you're scrolling, it would just keep going through this area here. So this is all the little individual templates put together in the grid so you can see what it, look like, what it looks like. I always encourage people as you're creating your templates to create a grid like this so you can see what it looks like. So you can also create your posting schedule of when you're going to post what you're going to do. Usually I only spend about one to two days a month, usually on a Sunday and plan out my next two weeks or my next month. And then this is how I do it because I just start putting all the posts inside there. So I know exactly what it's gonna look like. And then I put it into the Canva schedule and it posts everything for me, which is great because it saves me a lot of time. Now, questions I usually get is, well, what if you don't have the post yet to put in the template? You just put in the actual template. You don't have to worry about the content just yet. As you come, you can go in and change the template. So like for her, in this grid pattern, she's got four random posts. So she's got one that would be maybe an under contract, maybe another one that'd be an event, maybe another one where she's out with a client and they're just smiling and taking ussies and selfies. But the template can still be in here because it's the template that you wanna see to place in the placement you wanna have to look the way you wanna look. So let me go, this is back to going to the actual templates. So I'm going too fast, here we go. This is the video, so you guys can see there's different things going on. You got that little circle around the O. You've got the line going across down here. And this is just so you can, within the first three seconds, grab someone's attention. It's really important to have a mix from static posts to video posts to what I call animated posts. So this isn't necessarily a video, but it is a animated post so that it grabs someone's attention. It used to be just photos that gets people's attention, but you want to really have a balance of all three because different things attract different people. I am completely an eye personality. So animated, lots of colors, lots of movement and what is what grabs me. If it was a static post with just a whole bunch of text, you're not going to grab my attention and I'm just going to pass right through it. But you don't know who's viewing. So you want to make sure you have a little bit of everything to be able to capture your entire audience that you want to have. So this is an example of an animated post. She would just add a little bit of text at the body right down there. And then she would, where it's highlighting with the red line where it says offers healthcare, that would be her title. So whatever she wants to say, they offer healthcare or they give you flexible hours or whatever point she's trying to make, she would put right there. Um, this is how, oh, this, this is a template that we made um, for, which template is this one? Okay, this is a featured agent. So when she wants to highlight someone within her area and within her district, she put a beautiful photo of them here, their name and a little bit about them, which is gonna highlight the agent on her Instagram page. And then this would be great if you're the agent that is being highlighted to share it to your page. 
And then that gives you both a little bit of the SEO and a little bit of the um, analytics that you would get from that particular post. So this is another post you can do, maybe instead of, if you're not the district director, maybe you're highlighting a client that you're working with. You're excited that they you know, finally bought a house, or maybe it's something, they put a new bush in their yard, or they found a cute new, you found a new cute little restaurant in the area that you love to sell houses in. This template can really be used for anything. You know, the, the templates you create are gonna be based on what you need to show. Um, this one is going to be her introduction. It's really important to reintroduce yourself to your social media channels at least once a month because your followers and viewers do not stay the same. So you want to refresh it every 30 days. So this will be a post that she's going to do once a month to kind of just introduce who she is. So you can either have the same post that does every 30 days because 30 days ago, someone who saw it is going to forget they saw it. Um, or you can just keep changing the different facts or different things that you want to about yourself. But this is the template you absolutely 100% have to have in your collection of templates is an introductory template because you want to have that at least every 30 days as you're going through creating all your templates. Uh, this is a national post that is with Fathom um, that we just personalized more to District Director Janet Mitchell. So it's showing that she's referring to this class. And then that's the second one. And I think we already looked at that. So let me get out of the presentation mode. So I can actually show you how to create one. How do you get out of this? Perfect, okay. So now you see in full screen exactly what the templates look like. I wanna show you what they look like when you're editing them. So let's go to an image first. Let's do, let's start with an agent review. So when you open up the editor to edit a template that you have, oh, did this go to Facebook? This is the Facebook one. Let me get out of that. That's not what I want to do. Let's go to this one. Why is it doing it like that? I just want to. <laughs> Perfect, we'll do this one. Okay, so this is what I call the regular post template. So what I'm going to do is add a page and start with blank to show you the process and how we actually created this one. So first you wanna make sure that you upload all the graphics, logos, and things that you wanna have inside of your Canva. I obviously already have all these things, so it's gonna make it a little easier. So to create this, the first thing that I'm going to start with is the photo. So you're gonna click on this area right here that says elements in the left sidebar. And then this is gonna show you all the things that you can add inside here. So you, it always shows you your recently used elements. You can add lines and shapes, graphics, photos, videos, audio clips, charts, tables, frames, and grids. The grids are gonna be your ones that can take up the full space of your template. So if I clicked on grid right here, you can see that it took up the entire space, which almost makes it the background. I don't want this to be the background, so I'm going to resize it. And you can resize it any way you want. So you can take it away from being a square or keep it a square. You can make it long, you can make it really small. You really can adjust this however you want. If we went over here to the other side and got a frame, a frame, you can only change the size. You cannot change the shape. So I couldn't make this a rectangle. I can only make it a really small square or a really large square. So that's going to be your difference between the frames and between the grids. So if we looked at grids, these are all the different types of grids you can have. This is how I created the overall Instagram grid layout by using one of these grids. So if you're wanting to do a collage of photos, you can click this and just drop in all of your photos. So this is the reason to have the grids, to have all the different kind of setups that you can have with that and layouts. With frames, it's going to be just the actual shape that you want. So if you want to have a tear in your photo, you can see that little tear right there. If I wanted to make this a little bit bigger so you can see it, and I'll just throw in a picture so you can see the tear in the photo, you kind of just slide it to where it goes. And so you see how it kind of tear, it tore the picture right there. It creates several different areas in the photo. 
So you can almost split a photo apart like this, which almost looks like a really fancy kind of editorial thing. You can go in and crop this to make it look like, if I want this to look like it's cutting up, I can go here and move it around to where I feel it's kind of matching what's happening in the other picture. If I want it to do that, um, you can go in and put a totally different picture. So if I just wanted to have a color there and then I wanted to have a different color over here to just frame them, this is a great way if you wanna put in a cut off photo, but then have different of your brand colors in there. So this is kind of just an example of the element with that torn photo there. If I want to try and do something like this, you can see it almost comes off looking like a film. So you can just throw a photo in there. So it's it's really great to use something like this because you don't have to create that actual film. It creates that look you're going for for you. So I'm going to just get out of that. And we're going to go back to creating this template. I just kind of wanted you to see all the different um, things that you could do here. So what I used was going to the grid. We made it smaller, which is this box right here with the photo. So you put in that area first. Then the way that I created these lines over here is we went over to elements again. And we went to lines. So I'm gonna go to see all. And then you can see all the different lines, shapes. So if I wanted to add a hexagon, I can add a hexagon. If I want to add a circle with just the outline, I can do that. So there's millions and millions of things that you can use right here, hearts, squares, all kinds of shapes. If you wanna look like you have a bubble text box from talking to someone, you could put that in there and then kind of turn it whichever direction you want it to go. So I simply used, at least I think I did. A, which line did I use? Now I have to remember what we used. I think it's going to be easier. See, this is what I talk about. I'm not good at editing another one. I'm going to create a whole new one so you guys can see how it's gonna go because now I don't remember what I used. So we're gonna go in and create a whole new template. We're gonna do an Instagram post. There we go, okay. So Janet, can we get someone as an example and actually create a template for someone so I can kind of show how to do it from scratch? I think that's gonna be much more helpful than editing one of yours. Okay, sure, so what are you asking? <clears throat> Is there anyone who has a specific uh, post that they would like to see how to make? And then I'll just make it for them to see how it's made. Ooh. Like if, if they know what kind of colors they want, if they want a, a open house one, if they want a new listing post, like anything like that. And I can kind of create it to show people how you create a template from scratch using the elements. All right, guys. Well, this is your chance if you want to. Um, okay, Nancy Jennings, unmute yourself and then tell us what you'd like her to do. I'm, I'm currently wanting to create a template or something for buyer's needs since I am a buyer's agent right now in a searching for um, spe specific locations, specific, like I'm looking, they want to spend up to $500,000 in a home, either Sherman, Van Alstine, Anna, North Collin County, South Grayson County. Um, I don't know. I want to make a cute flyer to put on my website for that. And then social media, obviously, as well. Does that make sense? It does make sense. And the great thing with Canva, what it does, and, and, and stay off mute so we can kind of talk through this so I can kind of show you how it's created. So the great thing with this is you can resize one design into several things. So you don't feel like you have to make several different, te different templates for the same thing. So if you go over to this area right here, right now it's sized to be an Instagram post. So you can see up here in the bar where it says untitled design Instagram post, it's sized to post Instagram. But if you want to start with a flyer and then create the flyer with all the big elements and then size it down to an Instagram post, that's probably going to be better versus trying to create the Instagram post and then size it up to a flyer. So if okay. we went right here to resize and just go through here, you can find the size that you want. So we want to do a flyer. So this one would be a five by five, you know, 5.5 by 8.5. You can customize the size that you really want it to be. But just to make this easy, let's just start with what they have. 
We're going to copy and resize. And do you see how the layout changed the size from the Instagram post here to this one? So we're going to actually close out the Instagram one. Um, so what colors do you like to use for your personal kind of page and your branding? Have you thought of that? Uh, I use turquoise and gray are our colors. Turquoise and gray. Okay, so perfect. So you're wanting this flyer to represent what specifically? So when you're doing when you're doing posts, you want it to have one particular specific thing because you don't want to overwhelm them with too much. And that's when you would create several different ones. So what's the one thing you would want this flyer to highlight? Um, I think at the end she was saying, um, this is what my buyer is looking for. My buyer yeah. needs a house that is this this sales price in this area with this number of square footage, et cetera. So it's, it's an advertisement like who has a house for my buyer? This is what my buyer is looking for. Yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> okay, so it's it's more so a, let me, so I'm, I understand the flyer. She's putting the flyer out to get people to say they have what she's looking for. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so it would be more like a, do you have this kind of post? Okay. Now I'm starting to kind of understand it. So there's a couple of things you can do. You can see all of these templates on the left-hand side. Like I was talking about, there's hundreds of different types of templates that you can go through. It may be easier for you when you first start out to just click one and then edit it. I find it takes much longer to do that. So I'm going to start with first getting an idea. I use these templates more so as inspiration. So if you are wanting to do... So let's do a, let's say we're looking for a promotion of some sort, just to kind of get an idea of the template. Okay. Oh, I like this one. Okay. So if we wanted to do something like this one, okay. So you can right here have either a photo of the type of house you're looking for, a photo of you, because you're the one that you want them to contact, or, you know, a picture of the type of land you're looking for. You can put that here as a photo or a video. Um, in here, you can put in some fun facts of what you're looking for. So for example, right here, where it says find a doctor. Let's make this a little bit bigger. If you wanted to change that to, oh, I wish my mouse was working. Okay. Forgive me, guys. I am on a tablet with a stylus and it doesn't work all the time. Um, so if you wanted to change this to size Probably of about one. under, yeah, it was size 2000 square feet or more or half an acre or more. Okay, so you can put size of lot and then put the information okay. that you're looking for there. You can change the icon or this one will work because you're, you're searching for the size of lot. So you can change the title of that to say the size of lot. What's another thing you'd be looking for versus just the size? Um, price under 500,000. Okay, so let's do price. And then what's the third thing you'd be looking for? Three bedrooms with an office. Let's mark that as features. features. There you go. Okay. All right. So you said you do turquoise and gray, right? Yes. So we're going to go over here. Turquoise. Is it a lighter or a darker shade of turquoise? Darker. Close to this or a little lighter? A little lighter. Okay, so we're gonna go here. And. Hey there, oh. Lucid Lemonade, where you, that first one that you have Lucid Lemonade, you see down five, one, two, three. There's more blue? Down. Yeah, perfect. The first one or the second one? The first one. Okay, perfect. And then you said gray, right? Yes. Okay, so we'll change the purple to gray. A light gray, a dark gray. Dark under bolted business, that last one. Perfect. Okay, so in a flyer like this, there's a couple of things. What this one does is it has it as a gradient. So it starts from your turquoise and then goes into your gray. Obviously, if you want your colors to stand out a little bit more, you wouldn't use this. So we could delete that. Okay, if something was attached to it. Let's undo that. Ungroup. You know, let me do this. This is why it's not showing all of my stuff. There we go. Now I have all my things. 
Okay, we're going to ungroup. Perfect. I want to delete just that. Okay. And then if we want to go with elements, background, I don't want to do that because I can't change the colors. Okay, so if we want to go with more of a swoosh, that's more fun. Let's go back to that turquoise. Um, and make this one gray. So if you're wanting it to be a little bit more fun, do you see how I totally changed the look and it's kind of got that kind of fun, funky edge? Yes. I'm going to put this to the back so it's behind. And then if I want to duplicate that, and then make this one the gray, I'm going to turn this a little bit so it's completely hidden. And then push this all the way to the back. Do you see how the elements, it kind of just cute. changed it. You had the gradient, yeah. you could do something like this. They've got little shaded circles over here. So you can kind of see how that kind of changes things. I'm gonna get rid of the circles. I'm gonna also move this so it covers that whole side there. Um, if we want to change this and say, I, I'm looking for. No, I don't like that. Okay. What's the title you want you would want it to say? Do you have I am looking for in search of? Maybe in search of? Let's do in search know. of and see if that will start. This is always great about templates. That's what you can always change. So let's do. In, ser in search for, let's try and search for. No, let's keep that. Okay. Do you have any favorite shapes or uh, elements or uh, fabrics or textures? Um, well, our logo for my team is the state of Texas, we're Lone Star Property Group. So maybe stars are the shape of Texas or something. Well, that's cute. So you can do something like this where you can get an element and either make it hidden, kind of like how I just did this with this. So let me go from the beginning. To show so I clicked on the outline of Texas. You can also just do a solid. So when I click on that one, it comes looking black and kind of bold. I don't want it so bold, so I'm going to change the color to a white that's still too solid. So this area right here is the transparency where it starts with dark dots and goes to lighter. And you can change the transparency as much as you want from really transparent to not so transparent. So if we did something where it's kind of in the back, let's put it, I don't think you're gonna see it when the cell phone, let's see. No, I don't want it all the way to the background. I'm gonna change just backward behind the phone. So this right here, we can have a little smaller, more so there. Oh, let's do right there. And we're gonna make the text where you can see a little better. I don't like this little goo 
We want the text to stand out. So with your text, you can do all kinds of effects. So when you go into effects, you can see you have different styles. You have no style at all, a shadow, a lift, a hollow, a splice, an echo. You can do a neon, which makes it like a neon sign. And you can also curve the text if you want it to curve around something. So if I wanted to do something here where I want it to curve around the cell phone, you can change the radius of how it's going to go around whatever you want. This works great if you have a circle or something round that you want it to do. You can either go up with it or you can go down with it. I'm not wanting to do that this time. I just wanted you guys to see all the things that you can do with text so you don't feel like you're just doing a regular text. You can put a, that's new. Oh, I'm excited. They didn't have that. Oh, okay, I'm excited. Um, they have now where you can do a background behind your text. So if I wanted this to stand out more, from behind, then I could do something like that. If I wanted to do the glow, this is the glitch, that's the echo. This is the splice, with that, that's new. This is the hollow, so it looks like it's just text outlining. This is the lift that kind of just puts a shadow behind so it makes it stand off. And then this is a shadow and you can choose the color of the shadow. So if you wanted it to really stand out, you can choose the color and then you can also choose um, the offset. So I can go really bold with it. Let's zoom in a little more so you can see. I can go really large with the offset or I can bring it in closer to the letter. If you guys can kind of see how that's going bold and then not so bold. Um, the direction you can change if it's going from the top from the bottom, from the right, or from the left. You guys see how that's kind of moving around. You can change that where that's going to go. You can change how blurred it is on the edges or how solid it is. And you can change the transparency. So if I want this to be a solid or if I want it to just look more like a fade. So these are all the things that you can do inside the text and then change it up. <laughs> Your son just jumped in making a funny noise. Um, so let's go here and go back to what we want this to look like. Let me scroll back down. So I'm not liking the Texas anymore. Let's make Texas a little different. That's better. A little faded. Uh, let's make the title bigger. And then let's just change the photo. Let's just say for template purposes, we'll just say businesswoman. Oh, let's just put real estate agent. How about that? And let's. Just grab her for now to put right inside there. So you can put pretty much whatever you want inside here. You guys can put a picture of your team, a picture of you again, like I said, of the land or anything that you want. So we're gonna wanna change the colors of everything to match uh, the brand that you guys want to have. So for this little in search of, we wanna change that to the gray. We wanna change that to the gray. This to the gray, we don't want this. We want the price, little icon here. And then features, let's see, what kind of icon can we use for features? You were talking bedroom, so let's go to graphics. And let's go with bed. The other ones are in a circle. Try and keep it consistent. When you're looking at all your elements, what you wanna do is find the consistency. So we have the size of the lot in a circle with the magnifying glass, the dollar sign in a circle. So I wanna also find a bed that's also going to be in a circle. So those elements stay as close together as possible. I'm gonna size this down to match. Perfect. 
Okay. So you have a little area element where you can drop any photo that you want that's in the cell phone. I'm going to change the color of the cell phone to match what we're doing here. I think white will work there. And then I think the grays here. And then I think this goes to blue. So now that this looks much better with your flyer, um, and then contact us over here. We can get rid of all of this here. You can put contact information here. So if we want to go again with phone. So if they have this information, they're contacting you. We want this to be a little smaller. And then we're just gonna put in a phone number. So we're gonna go here to text and add a text. I will mention here, if you do have the pro version, on the left right here where it says untitled brand kit, you can put your own brand kit. So this is my brand kit right here, which got all the pinks and purples. And then, then this is Janet's. So you can input the actual hex codes to all of your colors. So you never have to keep trying to search for the colors. It'll automatically just populate under the color section. And then you can automatically put in your text. So whenever you type, you don't have to keep changing the text to what your actual text is. So right now this is showing my branded text. So this is the text that's for my titles, my subheadings, and my body. So by just clicking that, it automatically puts in the text that I want. So I don't have to go in and change it. So that's going to be a, a plus when you're creating your template. So you never have to worry about all your fonts always being the same. When you're doing brands, you want to make sure everything is consistent. So your titles are always the same font. Your subtitles are always the same font. Your body of text is always the same font. Your colors are always the same. And that's what creates your brand. When you, when you start going off from that, it starts to look really busy and inconsistent, which is what you don't want to have. So we're just going to put in any random number that I'm typing here. There we go. Athena, we have a couple yeah. of questions on how do you upload a brand kit? Oh, okay, perfect. We can go over that route while I'm doing that. We can do that. So how you upload a brand kit without losing this, I'll go right over here. So you can only do the brand kit if you have a pro account. You cannot do it if you have a free account. So on the home area where you're going to be, so let's make sure we're at the home. Over here on the left-hand side, where it says home, all your design, shared with you, all your folders, trash, et cetera, scroll down to where it says brand kit. You'll click on that. This will be blank if you don't have it already. Let me show you what a brand kit would look like. So I'll show you mine and I'll show you hers. This is all the versions of all of my logos. You can put as many in there as you want and you can change whatever you want the category to be. So these are gonna be my brand logos. These are my brand colors. These are the three different businesses I'm running. So each one of them have their own separate color scheme. And then what I was talking about earlier with the text, my title text is Bart's Malaga. And then I use to go for both my subheadings and my body. It's just one is bold and one is not. So the way you create this, and let me go back. And then this is Janet's, all her logos, the colors right here. And then again, the chosen fonts right over here. So this is what it would look like once you have your brand kit. So when you wanna create a brand kit, you'll click right here, it says add brand kit. We'll put in the name. So I will just do, um, let's come up with. Demo. Demo? De de demo. Okay, that works. Let's just do a demo. Can I ask a question while you're working on that? Yes. Um, and maybe this is for Janet. Do you know if with the Fathom uh, marketing materials that we have, are we allowed to manipulate the color schemes of them or do we need to stick to the grays and reds? No, you're absolutely allowed to make them any color that you like. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Uh, so right here, you would just add in your brand logo. So once you created it, um, you title it what you want it to be. You'll just press this plus button right here, and then you'll go into your computer system to upload the logo that you want. To do your brand colors, you'll need to have what's called the hex codes, the H-E-X codes. 
Um, and you can usually get that if you just have a picture that has a color you want, you can upload it um, into Color Picker, I believe it's called. I'll double check and I'll send it to you, Janet, so you can send it out to them, the exact website. Um, but that you can just point to where the color is and it'll tell you what the hex code is, what you're looking for, so you can make sure you get the exact color. Uh, if you are picking them and you just want to use the palette, you can just click the plus sign and then you can move the thing around so it gets to the type of color you want. So if I want it more in the reds and then I'm kind of deciding which one I want, you can see these numbers by that pound sign that's changing. That's what the hex code looks like. It's six digits and the pound sign. And that's how you get to the exact color that you're wanting to have for it. So we're just going to randomly choose some colors here for the demo. We'll stick with pink since that's where it landed. We'll go with a gray and we'll go with a kind of gold color and then let's choose a green. I want more. Let's go with that one. So then now I've created my brand kit by just putting in all the colors. You can also click on discover palettes if you're having a hard time figuring out what brand colors you want. Canva does have something that can help you with that. And then over here with your brand fonts, you would choose what's your head style, what's your subheading, and what's your body style. It's great to have at least a minimum of two different fonts versus one font. Um, you can do a bold or a serif or a corporate looking font to be your head. Um, and then you can have the same font for both the subheading and body style. Maybe one's just bold or one's italicized or larger size. So that's how you can work with two. Or you can have three fonts for all three. You just want to make sure that they all look good together. Um, so here, if you already have the fonts downloaded onto your phone or tablet or computer, whatever device you're working on, you would just click on upload a font and then it would go into your system for you to load that font into this area. So this is how you would create your brand kit. So once you have this created, so I'm just going to choose some fonts here just to show you what it would look like when you go back into editing. Um, so I'm going to go with, Okay, so we're just going to go with League Gothic here. I'm going to make it bold. And then I'm going to go with Lato here. So you guys can see three different fonts. So this is going to be the demo. So then when I go back to the home and I go to create a design, to use my brand kit, When I want to click on uh, click on this little square right here to change the color, you can see all the brand kits right here. So right now it's just showing a few, but I can change this to any brand kit that I want. So if I want the demo, I click on demo. And do you see how the colors automatically changed to my exact colors there? And then if I go to add a text box, you'll see those three text fonts that I chose. So it's gonna automatically be my heading, it's gonna automatically be my subheading over here, and it's gonna automatically be my body text right here. So this just makes it extremely easy to create all of your templates without having to constantly go in and remember what the hex code was or what color it was or which font you're using. You just go off of what your brand kit is. So that's gonna work with colors and with text. And then you'll have a photo, a photo, sorry, a folder down here that says logos. So all the logos that you have, I didn't upload one in my demo, but example, go back to my company. It will have, I'll have access to all my logos. So I don't have to keep uploading my logo every time I want to create a template or design, or I don't have to keep going, looking through all of my hundreds of photos of uploads that I did. It's all categorized here underneath the logos. So it's easier for me to find all of my elements and things that I want to do. Did we have any other questions? Because I want to make sure I answer those. So you guys actually get what you came for, other than the brand kit? No, that, that was it. So let's go back to and, and finish up what you were doing with the flyer. OK, so here we go with this, because we have just a few minutes. OK, so um, who was I talking to about this so I can complete it for her? 
Nancy, that's me. Okay. I'm here. Okay. Okay. So since you're going to get this, let's make it to what you actually want to have. So let's get rid of this over here. What is the phone number for you that you want to use? Uh, 214-566-2791. Okay. Let's bring the font down. Okay, so I just threw these in here just to kind of show you the different kinds of things. But if this isn't what you're wanting, we can always change back to a gradient. We can just do a solid. You said you're Texas, so let's actually play off of that. Um, he he Helen, can you mute yourself? this Texas. So you can make it much more simple and having just the color in the background and then all your text, you can keep this back white. And make it cleaner. We're going to change the color of this. So you see the phone. If we want to put in a star, we can do that. So you can have a star going across the whole thing. We got rid of the Texas. You can have Texas there instead. You can have the graphics. What kind of direction do you think you want to go? Um, if that works, I'd probably put my logo in there, which is the state of Texas with a star over North Texas. In the um, cell phone? Oh, oh, or in addition to this, well, yeah, I like the cell phone. Actually, that's really cute. I could put my business partner a nice phone uh, picture in there. That would be cute. Absolutely. And then where you want to, if you want to put a logo, I'll put a square to show you where that could go. So I'll just put in a template to hold the photo of your logo. Uh, graphics. Let's put in a, what I call a placeholder. So you can put your logo in the top corner right here. Okay. Right over by the in search of. So you would just drop it in there. Let's move this. Let's move this to be more like in. That's better. So you can put your logo where that little kind of cloud landscaping look would go. That would go there. Um, I'm really not liking the blue on the white. Mm. I'm a perfectionist, you guys, so I'm not going to spend here all day trying to do this. I just wanted you guys to see how to do it. Um, that but I would, gave I would me make, a good start. I really appreciate it. I would totally change this into a, a different outline and different things like that. But I really just wanted you guys to see all the things you could do. Let's change this where you can see it better. So if you're gonna do something like this, where you can put a picture of your partner and you in the cell phone, um, then in this little text area here, you can do more of a blurb about who you guys are and then, or the purpose of this flyer. And then you would break down in this text area, what type of size lot you're looking for in this text area, the pricing range you're looking for in this area, the features that you're looking for the house to have. You can put all your contact information here. So if we have just, the phone number, we can change this to keep the text the same. We're going to change that to your email address. What's your email address? 
It is Nancy at LoneStarPG.com. Um, sorry, PG. Okay, yeah. so move that left. Move that here. We're gonna make these bold instead, so you can see it better. I'm gonna get a email icon. So as you guys can see, everything I'm trying to find, I can find right inside Canva. So you're not having to go on Google and download a bunch of things. It makes it really simple to just use the elements that are already in here. So I'm gonna make this a blue, bring that down. I want a circle, so I don't want that one. So let's go with this so I can stick with the same element. Make this smaller Come here. Let's move all of this over. Okay. So this is gonna be like a basic. So what I really kind of wanna show you is how you would resize this. So once you get this looking exactly how you want and we have it, we're gonna click on, like I was showing you earlier, this resize button. And then we're gonna choose what we want. So if you now want this to also be an Instagram post, we're gonna click on Instagram post. We don't want to change this. So you don't wanna click resize because then it's gonna resize the original. You want to copy it into a different size. So we're going to copy and resize into an Instagram. And then voila, it turns it into an Instagram size. You do have to do a couple little different elements. But, okay, why is my start? There we go. You would just kind of edit it just a little bit versus trying to start from scratch all over again, trying to make it exactly the same as the flyer. All your text will already be in here that you want. And you just move this around to fit better in the size. But then you're just now moving things instead of trying to recreate the entire uh, template all over again. So you can do this with anything. You can do this with Instagram. You can change it to Facebook. You can change it to a trifold. You can change it to a PDF, um, not a PDF, but um, into a PowerPoint presentation. So you can resize anything. So I just really wanted you guys to see that tool, how you can resize it into whatever you want it to be without having to fully redesign anything. Um, what other kinds of things would you guys like to learn other than seeing all the things that you can do, um, how easy it is to create a template using all the things here, the brand kit, any other questions someone just really wants to know about how to, oh, you talked about mom, about how to um, put it into, um, into Instagram. So let's go over that. And that, and that will be the, that will be the last stop. Okay, perfect. We're going to do that really fast because it's really simple. So I'm going to go over here to your existing. So once you have your post and you're in this editing screen and you're, reg you're ready to share it, you're going to be able to go, let me put this back where it needs to be. So you're going to click this, the three dots by the download button. So you'll click the three dots and you'll see where it says download Instagram personal Instagram business because it's can post to either one of them. You're going to see where it says schedule. So you're going to click on the schedule and then you can choose the date that you want it to post and the time that you want it to post. So if I want this to post on Thursday, the 27th, and I want it to post at three o'clock PM, I'm going to do next. I'm going to choose the channel that it wants to post to. So if you have multiple channels, you would just choose the channel that you want it to post to once you have it connected. So I'll just choose, I want it to go here. You're gonna type the text that you want it to say, text demo, text demo. You write everything that you want. And then you're simply going to post schedule post. And then what's going to happen is you're going to give it all the authorizations for it to go to that. And then it'll automatically post to Instagram on that date at that particular time. Um, so it's really easy. So you can plan out all of your posts in the calendar 
<laughs> you can put um, all your posts inside the calendar and then you can see your calendar in a full view to see everything that you have. Um, so Janet, what I think I'll do is I'll create a little video presentation to show how to create the template to go into posting to the full view and then you can just share it with them since we're out of time. That sounds like a great deal. Athena, you did a fabulous job. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise. We got a great deal of information here. And again, I am recording this, so we will take this. <clears throat> and when you um, send the extra video, I will update that, that as well. But thank you for your time and your expertise, your energy, your smiles. You did an awesome job. Thank you so much. Great. Thank and you if everybody you else for coming. I'm going to send you Nancy's. I'm going to go ahead and finish it because it's bothering me. It's not done. So I'll finish it off and, and then share it. And then you can share that out. But I really want people to get what they need. So I'll send you the a video that everyone can watch later. Perfect. All right, guys, you all go out and make it a great day.